230 passengers and 12 crew members. All lost their lives except one survived. Interestingly, a man seated in 11A near an emergency exit reportedly pushed the damage emergency door after the crash. Mysteriously, a man walked out of the plane with no serious injury. We'll look at the various scenarios how it might have crashed. Was it dual engine failure or the shield the flaps are retracted or not retracted? All analysis in the video ahead. Here is the detailed timeline. At 1.39 p.m., Flight AI-171 took off from runway 23 at Sardar Vallabh by Patel International Airport in Ahmedabad. Weather conditions were reported to be stable with clear skies and good visibility, ideal for flying. Moments after takeoff, the aircraft climbed to an altitude of approximately 625 feet, or about 191 meters. Then, without warning, it began to lose altitude rapidly. Within a few minutes, around 1.42 p.m., it is here the flight crew made a distress call, declaring a mayday to air traffic control. This urgent signal indicated a critical emergency. Tragically, it was the last communication ever received from the aircraft. In the two minutes that followed, radar ADSB tracking data showed that the aircraft had vanished from monitoring systems, indicating a sudden and uncontrollable descent. At around 1.44 p.m., the aircraft crashed into Meghani Nagar, a densely populated neighborhood just outside the airport perimeter. The plane struck a hostile building on the campus of BJ Medical College, where students were inside. The impact caused a massive explosion, followed by thick plumes of black smoke rising above the crash site. One particularly remarkable detail has emerged. The sole survivor of the Air India Flight AI-171 crash reportedly heard a loud noise just 30 seconds after takeoff. We'll come back to that, but for now, let's take a look at how he managed to survive. The passenger Vishways was seated in 11A, a seat located in the first row of the economy cabin, close to an emergency exit on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. As the aircraft began to lose altitude rapidly and headed toward a residential area, it was initially unclear whether it had struck a building. However, according to reports, Vishwas reportedly managed to push open the damaged emergency door and walk out of the wreckage. Contrary to earlier reports suggesting he had jumped, he actually walked away from the crash site. This was possible because the plane had only climbed to about 625 feet before losing control, meaning it was flying at a relatively low altitude. Such an escape may have been physically possible under these circumstances. That all remains incredibly dangerous and nearly unimaginable. Coming back to the survivor, he reported hearing a loud bang shortly after takeoff. This sound might have been an engine failure. What's puzzling is that no smoke was visible in any of the video footage taken at the time. That absence of visible smoke raises the possibility that both engines may have lost thrust simultaneously. Such a scenario could result from a mechanical failure within the engines or a problem with the aircraft's fuel system. Either way, losing thrust from both engines right after takeoff would make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, for the aircraft to gain altitude or maintain controlled flight. There's also speculation about a potential mechanical failure involving the aircraft's control surfaces, specifically the flaps, which play a crucial role in generating lift during takeoff. Any malfunction here could have resulted in an immediate and dangerous drop in altitude. On the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, including those operated by Air India, Standard procedure during takeoff involves extending the flaps to a specific setting, typically flaps 5 or higher. The exact setting depends on the aircraft's weight, the runway length, and other performance-related factors. Once the aircraft has safely accelerated and gained altitude, the flaps are gradually retracted. This process is essential for transitioning the aircraft into climb mode. However, in the case of the Air India crash in Ahmedabad, it appears the flaps were either fully retracted or not extended at all during takeoff, an abnormal and highly dangerous condition. Taking off of flaps retracted or retracting them too soon drastically reduces lift at low speeds and altitudes. This compromises the aircraft's ability to climb and significantly increases the risk of a stall or complete loss of control. It's also very important to study another case plane crash scenario which hit a bird to help us understand better. This South Korean airline was granted permission to land from the south on runway 1 northward. But control tower cautions against bird activity so the aircraft made a slight deviation in flight path. The pilot declares mayday after it hit a couple of birds and it was instructed to make a go-around and land on runway 19 southward. It was at this moment the airplane encountered another problem with the landing gear which did not open. Finally, the plane had to make a belly landing with what was supposedly a landing gear failure because it hit in the middle of the runway and crashed into the elevated local lizer antenna and concrete erupting into a huge fireball, while the tail section remained intact. More details all in the video ahead. Let's take a closer look at the airport and its surroundings. The airport is located near the ocean, giving it a scenic yet strategic position. The primary feature of the airport is its single runway, designated Runway 0119, which measures 2,800 meters, which is approximately 9,186 feet in length. 
While this may seem relatively short for an international airport, it is more than adequate under normal circumstances. For comparison, depending on landing weight and runway conditions, aircraft like the Boeing 737 can safely land on runways as short as 1,500 meters, this is around 4,900 feet. This makes the runway at the airport more than sufficient for standard operations. Now let's move to a top-down camera angle for a broader view. As you can see, the area features known bird feeding and roosting zones. These are distributed across approximately four distinct areas, spanning from the southern to the northern edges of the airport vicinity. These zones are important to consider for both environmental monitoring and aviation safety. Airport with a runway at the end, you don't have a wall-like structure. The concrete structure holds a navigation system that assists aircraft landings and takeoffs. At 4 meters high, it is covered with dirt and was raised to keep the localizer level with the runway to ensure it functions properly. The black box recorder has been transported to Seoul, where analysis began immediately after the arrival of the investigation team. The Ministry of Transport has also released the following detailed timeline of events. At 8.54 local time, Muwon Airport Air Traffic Control ATC, clears Flight 7C2216 to land on runway 01. Morning 8.57 a TC broadcasts a cautionary advisory about bird activity in the vicinity of the airport. 8.59, the pilot of Flight 7C2216 reports a bird strike, declares an emergency with repeated. This is what he said, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday calls and notifies a TC with the message. Bird strike, bird strike, go around. Just one minute after the bird strike at 9 o'clock. The flight initiates a go-around maneuver and requests authorization to land on runway 19, which requires an approach from the opposite end of the airport's single runway that is from the north to the south, which is not the actual landing procedure. Usually then land from the south to the north. 9.01 in the morning, ATC clears the aircraft to land on runway 19. 9.02 local time. The aircraft touches down on the runway approximately 1,200 meters, which translates to 3,940 feet from the threshold of the 2,800 meter. This is around 9,184 foot runway. 9 hours, 2 and 34 seconds, local time ATC activates the airport fire rescue unit by triggering the crash bell. 9 hours, 2 and 55 seconds later, the airport fire rescue unit completes the deployment of fire rescue equipment. 903 Flight 7C2216 overshoots the runway and crashes into a hill-like structure beyond the runway's end, which later on we came to know that it hit the localizer antenna and its adjacent concrete embankment. 910 Local Time The Ministry of Transport receives an official accident report from airport authorities. 923 One male passenger is rescued and transported to a temporary medical facility for emergency treatment. A second person is rescued from within the tail section of the aircraft. Authorities are investigating whether the located beyond the end of the runway contributed to the crash.